heart that hurts I want to spend my life Mending broken people I want to spend my life Mending broken people Welcome to 3ABN Today. We are so glad that you've tuned in and just want to take this opportunity to thank you for your prayers and your love and your financial support of 3ABN, the Mending Broken People Network. I want to start today by reading you a passage and then we'll get into our interview. This comes from Matthew chapter 25. I'm going to begin with verse 31. And these are the words of Jesus. And he says, when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the holy angels with him. Then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate them one from another as a shepherd divides his sheep from the goats. And he will set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Then the king will say to those on his right hand, come ye blessed of my father, Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. I was naked, and you clothed me. Mm-hmm. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. You know, Jesus goes on to answer the question of his disciples who say, When did we see you in any of these conditions? And he said, when you've done this to the least of these, you've done it to me. And our special guest today is special. She's precious. I want to introduce to you Corrine Wilson, who is one of the co-founders of Bethesda Medical Mission Incorporated. And Corrine, we're so glad that you're here today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm excited about talking to you about, about Bethesda Medical today. Amen. And one, the your person who is going to be with you here today got lost on the way to 3ABN. We really are in the corner of a cornfield. <laughs> Bless his heart. So we will muddle through without him though, however. We'll I'm good. sure it's going to be great. Yes. Before we begin though, we have Johan Santana and he's a, I don't know if you've heard him play, but mm. he is an amazing pianist mm. and he is going to play for us to so sweet to trust in Jesus.
I'm so excited that Johan uses his talents for the Lord. You know, this reminds me of Isaiah 26, verse 3. When, when we trust in Jesus, mm -hmm. it will bring you peace. And we were just yeah. discussing how yeah. soothing that peace or that piece of music was, yeah. how it brings peace. But Isaiah 26, verse 3 says that as we keep our eyes focused on him, trusting in him, he promises us perfect peace. And that was beautiful. Thank you so much, Johan Santana. If you're joining us just a moment late, our special guest today is Corrine Wilson, and she is a co-founder of Bethesda Medical Mission Incorporated. We'll be talking about Relief Aid to Puerto Rico today. But before we jump into what Bethesda Medical Mission is doing, yeah. let's get to know you a little better. Green, tell us about your years growing up. Did you grow up in a church? Yep. Was your family Christian? How did you get so interested in the Lord's work? Yeah, so I was, as we were discussing earlier, I grew up in Winnipeg, Manitoba, and I went to Parkview Adventist Academy. I also went to a Canadian Union College, which I believe it's called now University and I transferred to Loma Linda University and finished my degree in dental hygiene there. And while I was there, I met my husband who was graduating from dental school at the time. And we really, really connected, obviously, and got married. But the other thing that was wonderful is that we both had a passion for mission. Uh, my very first mission trip was when I was a senior in high school. And it totally changed my life to be able to go into the island of Dominica and help people repair their homes and just interact with people was amazing. And I craved that. I really wanted that to be a part of my life. So when you say it changed your life, do you think you grew closer to Jesus? Because, I mean, you can be born and raised in, in a, a Christian family, yes. but that doesn't necessarily mean it's personal to you. Right. Is that when it became personal? And that's when it became personal. It's like actually on that trip is when I felt the connection to God and saying, yeah. you know, this is what I was meant to do. This is what my passion would be, is to serve people and to be able to help people. Mm -hmm. And I think that when you're a teenager, you see things in a totally different light. You're seeing things, well, what can I get? get? What can I receive? And when you're giving and you're able to share with other people, and especially on a level of these people's homes were totally devastated by the hurricane. They had no roof. They had a low supply of food and things like that. And we were able to come and help them with that. Totally changed my life. Praise God. You know, I always tell people, and I hope if you're listening, if you want your child to really get connected to the Lord, yeah. take them on a mission trip mm -hmm. because I see, I mean, uh, for years, I hear stories of kids, even troubled kids mm -hmm. and, and spoiled kids. Mm -hmm. We are so spoiled mm -hmm. here in the United States. Mm -hmm. And then when we go on a mission trip and you see others who have so little, right. but you see their response to, when God uses you as his hands and feet, yeah. it's exciting, it it's exciting. It okay, so your husband shared that same vision. Yes. Vision. Now, he's a dentist, correct? So my husband is a dentist, Dr. Brian Wilson. When we actually have a dental practice in West Hartford, Connecticut. Uh, we've been there for a little over 20 years. And we, before we had our children, we went on quite a few mission trips to different countries, Peru, uh, the island of Dominica, Dominican Republic, and we really enjoyed. We actually worked with another group that did a lot of construction. So we were kind of like the side gig, and that's where we met Dr. Roy Kellerman, and he was a medical doctor and his wife is a nurse. And we went on a lot of mission trips. And then after I had my girls, I took a little bit of a break. And we still felt the calling to be able to still go on mission trips, but we just didn't know how to go about it. So, as uh, we were discussing earlier, is that Dr. Kellerman was in Maryland and he was visiting his daughter there and he heard a sermon about the Pool of Bethesda mm. and what it really meant. And he, it took him to a whole new level when he learned that the Pool of Bethesda meant mercy and it meant mm. serving, it meant compassion. And when Jesus was there and healed that man or he wa everybody wanted to touch that water and they believed that they would be healed, it, it, it spoke to him. So he came back 
to Connecticut and said, you know what, let's start something. Let's, as small as it may be, let's see what we can do. And uh, Dr. Kellerman and my husband, Brian and, and Dolores and myself, we got together and we started thinking about what Bethesda Medical Mission could be. And so as you were planning this and seeking the Lord, mm. how did he lead you? I mean, I know now, that Bethesda Medical Mission Incorporated is a 501c3, a nonprofit, mm -hmm. and all who are there volunteer their time. Nobody gets paid a salary from this. So everything that you're doing, when the funds come in, mm -hmm. it goes to the relief Media of care. the needy. Yes. But how, tell us about that planning stage, because there are people out there who feel like God wants them to do yes. something, but they don't know how to get started. Yeah, so it is. it was a lot of planning in the beginning, because, and I think what jump-started it was because of the immediate response that was needed in Haiti after the earthquake. Yes. It was so devastating that we couldn't even get in right after the year that it happened, but we knew that, especially after the earthquake, that people needed care, and so we said, Let's make it a uh, medical professional group. So it would be a group of people either on the medical field or in the dental field. And let's go in and see where we could help. So that's what we did. We came together with a group of people who were like-minded. We sent out the call to different people that we knew that might be interested in, in joining us. And we were very surprised to get a lot of people that really wanted to help. If they couldn't go on the mission trip themselves, they decided to send money or donations to help us. And it was a blessing. I think our first trip we had a little over 30 people that joined us Praise and God. we were able to provide medical and dental care to anybody and everybody who came to our clinics. They were mobile clinics because we tried to move around a little bit so that we could reach people but it, it really was a blessing and we saw so many wonderful things. Wonderful, wonderful. So you've been back to Haiti how many times? Uh, we've been to Haiti for five trips. We've done five mission trips since that first trip. Okay. Now Give us a little of, uh, um, when you said there was a lot of planning, mm -hmm. just tell us a little bit about the process of that, because once again, we have people I know who are interested. Right. Tell us a little of the process of that. So the process is, is that we had to find a, a group to work with while we were in Haiti. So when you're going into a developing country or going into a place that you want to serve, it was very much uh, advantage to us to know what was going to be happening on the ground. So we had to find somebody that we could have somebody the connection with. And so we found somebody in Haiti. Uh, we actually had a local pastor that we worked with actually in Connecticut, and he helped us with planning everything on the ground. First and foremost is to make sure that everybody was safe, making sure that we would have clinics or places where we could go and we could set up our clinics and to actually find a place where we could serve and that we could do it effectively. So that took a lot of planning. Uh, the other thing is, is trying to find housing for everybody. So that is another step of something that takes a lot of logistics, a lot of time and energy to get into. Yes. And then also the people that are going to be joining you. What are they going to be doing for the time frame that they're there? Are they going to be working uh, in a OBGYN? helping the uh, or helping the pediatrician or helping the dentist how are we going to bring all of our supplies so in some of the pictures that you'll see is that we had to bring a lot of our supplies from Connecticut and get it down into Haiti because so they didn't have they didn't have those things there so it was a lot of packing and planning and organizing and making sure that everything is organized and that everything can get there safely and effectively. Okay, so who is this? So this is uh, one of our technicians and uh, what we do is we do an eyeglass clinic right. where we actually use a machine or a computer that can read uh, the person's eyes and then it translates it to the computer and tells us exactly what type of glasses they need to be able to correct their vision. Uh, this picture here is obviously us in the dental clinic. Like I said, on those chairs, we actually have to bring all those chairs, bring all the supplies, mm. bring all the dental instruments to Haiti and set them up, get them organized and get them ready to go. This is Dr. Salius, one of our uh, 
doctors that join us in the dental clinic and she is amazing. She's done some incredible surgeries on some of the people there that have needed surgeries. And like I said, um, you can see all the things that need to be supplied. This is one of our doctors, a family care physician who is discussing probably high blood pressure is very pre prevalent in, in Haiti. So writing her a prescription, just so that you know also, we also bring a full-fledged pharmacy with us. Wow. So we have all kinds of meds, everything from medicines to uh, other supplies that we bring. These are our two co-founders, Dr. Kellerman and my husband, Dr. Brian Wilson. And last year we worked with BOHAV, with, which was a organization that's way up in the mountains in Haiti. And that's the gentleman that uh, you see there on the left. Bearded gentleman. Okay. Yes. And this is our pharmacy. You can see all of the different uh, medical supplies. And we actually count on all the meds like you would on a regular pharmacy that we have here in America and we have all kinds of supplies from medicines to high blood pressure meds whatever we can bring this is another picture of our dental clinic and we use all kinds of different supplies to be able to uh, bring care to everyone this is another one of our whole clinic. You can see the table in the far left there is all covered with all kinds of dental supplies and tools, sterilization. We have a sterilization process that we run through. So very effective clinic. That's a lot of logistics. A lot of logistics. So on our last one of our trips, we were actually able to do, dig a well so that there would be water that could be supplied to this area. So here you see the gentleman digging down. I don't know the logistics, but getting down in there to make sure that they are able to touch water and be able to pump it back up so they would have well. Yeah. Oh, this picture. I love this. This is a picture of our VBS program. Some nights we would have over 200 children. They would VBS hear about VBS. Vacation yeah, Bible vacation, School. Vacation Bible school and we would feed the children so we would have food available for all the children and we'd have a beautiful program available for them afterwards. Amen. And this is my lovely husband, uh, Dr. Wilson, posing with one of the kids. We would blow up balloons and give out toys to all the children. And uh, it's just a blessing to be able to, to share with them. Oh, that's precious. Now, yeah. while you were there also, you came across an orphanage that was in dire conditions. Yes. Explain what was going on at this orphanage. So in 2014, we were on our mission trip and we had a gentleman who approached us um, and said that he had been caring for children. It wasn't even an orphanage yet. He just knew that he needed to take care of these children. And he had about 15 children of various ages with him, but he had run out of food. And because he was not an orphanage, he didn't have any way of acquiring the food and getting better living conditions for the children. So he approached us, we went and we visited where he was and we it just broke your heart to see the way these children were living. They were living five, six kids to a bed and it wasn't even a real bed, you know. They had run out of food, the squander, the, 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 the dirt floors, it, it just, they just needed help and we said, you know what? This is something that we can take on. So we decided right then and there, we approached all the people that were on our mission trip and we asked them to donate money. And before you know it, we had raised over hundreds of dollars to be able to provide food for them right away. And we decided to d donate a lot of medications. We had the children visit our clinic so that they could be seen and be treated. And then we just said, we are going to support you. So since then, we have actually moved them to a new facility Praise God. We have redone a whole uh, building for them so that, that each of them have their own beds, they have a play area, and they have a school. So not only are they able to go to school, but they are able to educate the children in the area, and they have over 125 kids that come into the compound and are educated on the That's compound where the, where the, mich where the uh, orphanage is. So now we're working on getting them to have an actual status as an orphanage, so they'll be able to have aid from Haiti, but we, of course, we'll continue to support them. And you know, it's just so amazing to me how when when Christ is in you and you see a need, you want to meet you want, you want that to, need. Yeah. But these children went from perhaps not even having one meal a day right. to now they get three squares right. a day plus education. And plus education. And a hygienic area. Yeah. When, when you're talking about the medical professionals, your group has grown from 30 to what was your last? Yeah, so I believe on our last mission trip, we had over 70 people that joined us. Okay, so th that's so amazing yeah, how quickly is. God is, is yeah. growing this. Right. 
But are they all Adventist Christians? Or are they used no, that's what I love about our mission trips is that our last trip, we had probably about 50, over 50 medical professionals, and, and then we had about a little over 20 uh, construction crew, because we do do a lot of construction work now. And that is the beauty of our ministry, is that there are a lot of people that aren't Seventh-day Adventists. We have some people that aren't even Christian, and they join us on these trips, and they say, this is the Christ that I want to, that I am Christ. dying to see. A Christ who gives, a Christ who loves, a Christ who shares, a Christ who will not let the underserved be neglected. Amen. And that is what we're all about. We're all about helping those people that need help. And, the, and in Haiti, that is pretty much what you're going to see. You're going to see a lot of people that need help. And so not only are we ministering to the people in Haiti, but we're ministering to a lot of the people that join us on the trip because they are so excited to see the passion of Christianity, the passion of what Christ wanted us to do. Amen and amen. You know, and it's just, it's amazing to me that every time uh, God, God just has a magic formula, and I don't want to use the word magic, mm. but the blessing of the Lord is when you go somewhere to be a blessing to someone else. When God sends you out, mm -hmm. He always gives you a double portion he blessing does. in return. Yeah. Have you seen any, can you tell us any of the miracle stories oh, that you've seen? Oh, oh, miracles are beyond miracles. You have to realize that we're working with a lot of logistics. So like we were talking earlier about logistics, the miracles in logistics is I, I, every year I always say to myself, this is never going to work. There's no way we're going to get all these things into Haiti. And we're through customs. Able, through customs and every year it works. I can tell you one story where we were at American Airlines and we were flying with all of our bins. I wish I had a picture of all the bins that we bring. We bring these huge heavy duty bins and every year we always are overboarded with too many things, but we want to make sure it gets there. And I remember one year that one of the agents said, there's no way that we're not going to allow this to go through. And we said, you know what, let's just step back and pray. And we prayed about it. We prayed about it. And there was a, there was a, I guess it would be a, a shift change. Yes. And the next lady that came in, I approached her again and I said, you know, I, we, we're a mission group. We just want to bring these things. We're helping somebody. And someone, another passenger had just yelled at her and screamed at her. And I think there's this poor lady is under pressure. She is not going to listen to me. And she turned to me in the sweetest voice and she said, let's see what we can do. Is that I wish that a lot of people would realize that they could get much more done with honey than Amen. with flies, you know? Amen. And she turned to us and she said, let me go talk to my supervisor. And did you know that that supervisor was from Haiti herself and she allowed everything to go through. Praise God. And she didn't even charge us. Praise. <laughs> that was the hard part. I was like, Woo! if you charge us, I'll be happy. But if she didn't even charge us. She said, just let it go through. Let it go through. Um, when we're in clinics in Haiti, there are plenty of times when people come to the clinics and we see a lot of children who have been neglected, who have wounds and who need special healing. And we have seen they've come back to the clinic a few days later and they're better, they're healthier. Just, be able, just being able to give them the medication that they needed yes. and us being able to have it there for them is amazing. I remember one time in a dental clinic, we saw a young lady who came to the clinic and her hand was over her mouth like like this and we were like you know what's going on here and she sat down in the chair and what had happened was is that she had basically a double row of teeth she had never lost her primary teeth but she had grown in her adult teeth into that space and she was very embarrassed by it and mm. she was very shamed by it and one of the doctors says, you know what, we can help her. So we found her mother to ask for permission to do that. And as I sat down to do my periotherapy on my patient, I said, oh my goodness, what is this? And it was the same situation. They were twins oh. and the same thing had happened. So oh, that day we were able to do dental surgery on both girls and be able to give them their smiles back. And to this day, I just remember the smiles on their faces afterwards because they would have normally had to go through life with that embarrassment and now they were, they were beautiful again. Glory so, to God. Yeah. Glory to God. So 
The Lord has really blessed this Bethesda medical mission as it has gone to Haiti for the last five years in a row. But recently, mm. uh, Pastor Herrera from mm. Connecticut mm. came to you with a new plan. Yeah. Tell us about that. So, like I said, we had always gone to Haiti everywhere, every year, and we were planning on returning to Haiti this year. But after the hurricane in Puerto Rico, Pastor Herrera approached our organization and said that, you know, what you are doing in Haiti would very much be a benefit to what's going on in Puerto Rico. And because of the hurricane, a lot of homes were damaged, yes. and there was a lot of help. The construction crew that we had normally used in Haiti would have been a great benefit in, in, in Puerto Rico. So this year we have decided to take Bethesda Medical into Puerto Rico and report, re repair some homes that are going to be damaged and also to do some health fairs and to do um, some health clinics in Puerto Rico to help the people of Puerto Rico. You know, if somebody, we have a tendency in the United States that um, I, I just say we've got the attention span of a hummingbird <laughs> because whatever's on the news yeah. is what you feel like is going right. on, but right. there is still there is so still much need, suffering. So in much Rico. suffering it's on not the ground. Over. Yes, and that's what our plan was is that, you know, after you're right, after a few months, people it dies down and people forget about the need that's going on, but there are many people that are still devastated just even to have clean water, to have their homes repaired to receive medical and dental attention. Those kind of things are still very much needed in, in Puerto Rico. So since, uh, I said summer of 2018, we'll be going there. Praise God. So um, the Pastor Herrera, I know I heard something mentioned or, or read something mentioned that he's he has an association with yes. I Esperanza yes. para Puerto Rico, which means there is hope for Puerto Rico. And a lot of people there really were close to losing hope or mm. have lost hope. Mm -hmm. We we have some friends who live there mm. and they said the suicide rate is up. Mm. There are people who feel like life will never get yes. back to normal. Yeah. So explain what, do you know much about that group or can you give us, I know Pastor Herrera was supposed to be with us today. Yeah, so Pastor Herrera was supposed to be with us to explain a little bit more about that. From, but from what he had explained to us is that there was a lot of devastation that had happened in Puerto Rico and that a lot of the things that we heard here in America that things were much better and that things were, were simply not accurate. That there was a lot of people that were still suffering. There were a lot of people that still were without their homes that were still had a lot of issues going on and that we needed to address that and we needed to still send people into Puerto Rico to help. So that would be my appeal today is that everybody would understand that there are still a lot of people that are suffering. They're, they need financial, emotional, spiritual help yes. um, to go into Puerto Rico and be able to bless the people that are going on there, that are that are suff still suffering there. So I do hope that people will still realize that we still need to be there. We still need to be on the ground. Amen. So when you uh, are not on it, how many mission trips have you gone on? Personally, I have been on probably about nine or ten mission trips. Okay, and have you taken your daughters yet? No, I haven't. So this is the first year that my daughters will be going on a mission trip. So How I'm excited. old are they? My daughters are 10 and 12. Okay. Yes. So they'll be going along to help you yeah. with, will you do a vacation Bible school while you're in Puerto Rico? Our plans are to put together a vacation Bible school while we're doing our health clinics and especially on Sabbath on, and on Sunday we'll be doing larger clinics so definitely we'll be doing ways that we can communicate with the children there. That's nice. So you have the children who are, if their parents are in yeah. for the services then right. we've got something going on for the children. Right. Yes. So how has this changed your life personally? It has made me much more grateful um, mm. and thankful that God has given me the ability to serve. So of course it's made me grateful and thankful for the things that I have in my life, Amen. but it's given me the ability to say, you know what, I have these opportunities to give and to serve. I am so grateful for it. And yeah. I, the, the one thing that always reminds minds in the back of my head is that at, the, at Loma Linda, I remember when I first arrived at the campus, beautiful campus. Yes, it is. And I remember the, there's a statue at the first, it's just right outside of Prince Hall and, and, and at School of Dentistry. And it's 
it, it shows the pit, the uh, the story of the great Samar uh, the good Samaritan. Yes. And underneath it, it says to make man whole, Amen. and that is what we're here to do. I honestly believe that 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 story pr shows how we as human beings need to have the connection to those that are less fortunate and how mm -hmm. we can help. And when I arrived on campus at Loma Linda, I said that was what my goal was going to be. If there was any way that I could serve and not only overseas or in developing countries, but then also in Hartford. Bethesda Medical does a lot of health fairs. We do a lot of local things to help people that are in need. And that's what I would hope that everybody can do. And it doesn't have, you don't have to be a professional medical dental whatever it is, can, whatever your passion is, whatever your goal is, is to remember that story, to make man whole. Mm -hmm. And if everybody had a little bit of themselves in that heart, in, in their heart, I think that we would definitely have a much better society and a much better world. And this is something that um, probably has impacted your marriage as well. Yes, yes. When, when you are, you know, I'm very blessed. My husband is a very godly man mm -hmm. and we serve together. And when as a couple, mm -hmm. you share that passion, mm -hmm. that purpose, yes. and you're serving together, right. it, it is something, it's a special bonding, cementing right. thing. Yeah. And it seems to me that there's, as families serve together, right. it seems that God speaks his peace into that family. It, yeah. it changes the dynamics of family, period. Mm -hmm. and, and I hope that your girls, I know they're going to, they're to be blessed and get to yeah. see what mommy and daddy do. Yeah. And, and they will come back, sh I'm sure, with more grateful hearts right. themselves. Yeah. You know, this is what Bethesda Mission is doing, mm -hmm. is following the example of Christ method mm -hmm. of service. Mm -hmm. And it's exciting that you're reaching not only the people that you're ministering to, right. but the people who you take to right. minister. Right. You know, when you think about reach, have you, have you had anyone you mentioned earlier that some are saying, who were not even Christians, yeah. saying, now I see the face of Jesus. Right. This is what it's all about. Right. Tell us a little, kind of expound on that a little. Well, we have had some people, uh, believe me, we've had um, not, like I said, people that are not only Christian. We even had one person who was Buddhist that came with us and she had always she had worked with us in the past, but she had never really been able to see what Christianity was all about. Mm -hmm. And she said that this I could I, I, I could understand this type of Christianity. And even though uh, and you know that God sows seeds, you never know what's going on in her heart. I believe that it changed her. It changed her atti attitude to what Christianity could be and how serving God can bless other people. Uh, we've had people that are not Seventh-day Adventists to say they want to learn more about the Seventh-day Adventist Church. They want to know more about how Maranatha and other aid groups are going into other countries to help. So I think that it has definitely changed it. And, and, and we've had a lot of people attend church services when we were in Haiti too and there's no requirement for you to have to do that when you're on your mission trips but a lot of the people say yes I want to see what it's all about I want to see how you worship your God and they are moved and blessed by that too so Amen. I love it yeah. yeah well I think you brought a couple of videos and we'd yes. like to show those the first one is your husband and another gentleman who yes. are speaking and these yes. are the two found uh, there were four co-founders, you and your husband, and then this other doctor and his wife. Yeah, so Dr. Kellerman and my husband are what you're going to see in this one video. They're just kind of doing a little bit of a wrap-up of one of our trips that we had gone on. And the other video is just one of the gentlemen who had actually been to the clinic several times. Every year, I guess he waits for us to come in. Yes, mm -hmm. <laughs> And he's just saying thank you. He wanted to express his thank you and his gratitude for coming. And that's the other thing that I wanted to express, too, is that the Haitian people that we visit, it with. They are beautiful people. They are so gracious and they're so thankful for all the services that they give to us. And especially when they're waiting in long lines to be seen, they're always polite. They're always sweet. They're always wonderful. And uh, we love serving in Haiti. Wonderful people. Amen. Amen. So let's look at those videos now. <laughs> oh. <laughs> The week's just about over. We, we use our last day to work in Mont Moui, Haiti. Great day.
day. We did dentures, we did fillings, we did extractions, we did a lot of cleanings, we did eye care, we did a little bit of everything. You can even watch a little bit of soccer. Clearly we have seen possibly over 1,800 people at least. And uh, tomorrow, tomorrow we'll be going to uh, an orphanage in Port-au-Prince where we will provide care to, I believe, approximately 30 kids. And hopefully we'll get a chance to go to church right after that. But it's been a day, a week of service, and uh, we are grateful that we had a chance to provide this service to the people of Haiti. Well, that's precious, but now we've got one more, and this will be you talking with, uh, as, as uh, Kareen is speaking with a French-speaking Haitian. And we say thank you for the good service you give us. And then last year you gave like the same service. And then this year you again give the same good service. And then we say thank you. May the Lord bless all the groups. And then may the Lord like make you guys have a like a good trip, good travel. <laughs> Merci. Thank you. Oh, oh, oh. Um, comment te belles tu? Edson. Ah, see, I know a little French. <laughs> um, uh, uh, do you live here in Montwi? Yeah. Est-ce que vous en Montwi? Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. Well, All thank right. you for coming again. Thank you. Oh, Merci yeah. parce que tu es venu encore. And right. thank you too because you're coming again too. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. No problem. Thank you. That's sweet. I always thought it was comment vous appelez-vous. <laughs> It could be. <laughs> he pretended that he understood. <laughs> well, you know, I, I'm such a parrot. If I'm in France, I'll, I can speak this much French, but I'll, I'll speak English with a French accent. Right. Same when I get to England. <laughs> I mean, it's terrible. So when you are going on trips, mm -hmm. what, who, who are you looking to join you and what qualifications do they need? Well, we're looking for anybody who wants to serve. Um, anybody who has a good attitude and wants to serve and give of themselves, please contact us because we can find a way to make it work. Obviously, we are a medical and dental professional group. So if you have any discipline in medicine or in dentistry, we definitely can find a, a spot for you. Uh, the more that we have either, uh, either medical or dental, the more we can see more people. Uh, medical professionals, we take OBGYNs, pediatricians, emergency care meds, uh, medications, wound healers, wound specialists, uh, family doctors, anything. And the dental professional, uh, we have oral surgeons that come with us. Of course, general dentistries, hygienists, we love hygienists, they're hard to come by. Uh, but we're just looking for anybody who's willing to serve. And then even if you have none of those disciplines, there are so many other things that you can do on the ground. So we have a lot of people that help us with logistics, either it being making sure that food gets supplied or things get uh, spread out um, evenly in the clinic. We need runners in the clinic. We need people to help in the eyeglass uh, department. That means distributing eyeglasses, working with the computer. We also need people to help out um, just even with the with the the people that come to the in line making sure that they're in line properly that they're at the right line the we need people to help with registration we need people in pharmacy we definitely need people to help out in the pharmacy area and then of course because we do have the construction crew now we can have anybody who can swing a hammer please <laughs> join us because we love to have people for a construction crew also amen. so basically that includes anybody amen so now, the donations, as I said, if, if this is a 501c3 nonprofit organization, and no person who is part of the board or uh, works for the organization or volunteer 
or comes to go on these trips, right. no one's paid a no penny. One's paid. So everything, all labor is volunteer, correct? All labor is all volunteered. Our board members, which consist of, I think there's eight or nine of us on the board, we work very hard on a regular basis to make sure that these trips happen. We do not take salary. Every penny goes directly to patient care or to construction costs. And how do you raise your funds? That is the beautiful thing. It is all through the generous work of obviously God, but at the same time, everybody he uses people to just donate money. Sometimes we are just sitting there and we'll get a check and we'll have money donated. We do run a golf tournament once a year. So the local people and the Connecticut people come and they obviously it's a charitable event. So that goes towards our mission trips. But majority of it is just people one thing at a time. I, like the other day, my daughter was working on a a project where they needed to multiply their money. It was a project on the talent, you know, multiplying your talents. So they gave her a little bit of money and she was supposed to grow that money and give it to an organization. Well, she decided to take that money. She made money from that money and she donated it to Bethesda Medical. As little as it was, it was still a blessing. Yeah, and we yeah. have children that do that all the time that they just say, you know what, I want to donate some money. So every little dollar counts. Amen. Well, you know, I just believe that, uh, Kareen, when we think about how God works, mm. I believe that there's someone who's watching today mm. that would like to perhaps participate in one of these upcoming trips, yeah. or maybe the Holy Spirit is inspiring you to donate and help sponsor these mm -hmm. trips. So we want to put up your address role yeah. to let people know how that the, they can get in touch with you mm -hmm. to, uh, or with Bethesda Medical yeah. Mission to either seek enrollment in a, uh, one of the mission trips yeah. or to donate. So here's how you can get in touch with them. If you would like to support Bethesda Medical Mission, please pray for them and consider giving them your financial support. They also need personnel who will bring medical, dental, and construction help to those who need it so desperately. Visit their website, BethesdaMedicalMission.com, to find out how you can donate online or volunteer to help. Their website again is BethesdaMedicalMission.com. You may also call them at 860 243-5569 or write to them at Bethesda Medical Mission, 836 Farmington Avenue, Suite 215, West Hartford, Connecticut, 06119. And I just want to thank you in advance for your prayers and your support for Bethesda, which means mercy, mm. Bethesda Medical Mission Incorporated. Well, we wanted to bring back Johan Santana, and he has, God has given him such a gift on the piano, and he is going to play one of my favorite songs. Mm -hmm. This song talks about how we can wander from God and how he brings us back, Amen. and he's saying, seal my heart, Lord, here's my heart, take and seal it. And so he will be on the piano. You just have to, if you know the words, you will identify this. It is come thou fount of every blessing.
Well, I hope our interview today with Corrine is really motivating and inspiring you to do something for the service of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Corrine, do you have a closing thought before we say goodbye to our audience? I, I always think about that time when Dr. Kellerman came back from that sermon and he was compelled to start Bethesda Medical Mission. And just the fact that he was listening so intently to what was being said and how he was able to derive that, that character of mercy of what Bethesda mm -hmm. meant and what he wanted to do about it. And I always think, suppose if he came home and he had that, that burning in his heart and he let that fire go out and he just decided, ah, I'm not gonna do anything about it. And that is what I would love for everyone to see and to, to feel from what I were saying is that if you have a calling in your heart and you feel like there's something that you need to do, especially when it comes to her, uh, serving someone else Amen. or blessing other people, please go out and do it. Amen. I mean, if you feel from this interview that you think that, yes, I would love to join Bethesda Medical or yes, I would like to financially help Bethesda medical, please just get out, do what you can, give us a call, we'll find something for you to do because I think when God's calling on our hearts, that's the time that we have to move and we have to do something about it. The other thing is, is that Bethesda Medical is a great organization. I am so proud to be here, to be able to talk with you about it and to be able to share with your community about how wonderful God has blessed us and how we're able to bless other right. people. So I am praying and hoping that Bethesda Medical will grow after all these years of, of our service and what we've done and that there's much more wonderful things to come. You know, I heard a pastor say the other day that there's so many times people will come and they hear a sermon and they say, boy, that was a good sermon mm. and nothing happens. And nothing happens. <laughs> so what he did is on his bulletin, he has added three questions. Oh, and those like three that. questions with a little space after him is, what new thing did you learn today? Mm -hmm. What old thing? were you reminded of? Okay. And what do you plan to do about it? Exactly. You know, the Word of God is living and active. Mm -hmm. If we're living and active, mm -hmm. <laughs> when that Word comes on us, mm -hmm. it is meant to motivate us. It's meant to get us up. Right. And praise God for this, the good doctor and how he responded. And, yeah. and I'm just so excited about the passion yeah. that you have for this ministry right. and just want to thank you for what you do for the Lord. Thank you. Thank, thank you for you. being here. Thank well, you. our prayer for those of you at home is that the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit will be with you, not just today, but every day through eternity. God bless.